I wasn't able to go to the press launch, but look at my first Yamaha loaner of the year. <laughs> Let's go, MT-10 SP. Today's gonna be a great video. What's going on guys, Chase on Tools here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell, Georgia. In front of us, I have the beautiful 2023 Yamaha MT-10 SP. Now, I didn't get to go to the press launch. I had to send my buddy Joe to the press launch to cover it for the channel. But it turns out Yamaha just got a MT-10 SP, the 2023 model, in their press fleet. So we have this thing on loan for a little while. Now, this is a first ride. If you guys aren't familiar with first rides, this is a video where I ride a motorcycle for the first time and I tell you guys whether I would buy it or I would skip on it. Before we get started, let's see what it looks like and let's see what it sounds like because it sounds so good. Hey guys that's what it looks like that's what it sounds like now before we get going this video is not sponsored but it is supported by wbrgarage.com that is my website where i build motorcycles and i give them away to the people that support the show this motorcycle i will i'll give you guys a hint for the bike we're building it has similarities with what you're seeing here that's all i can say go check out wbrgarage.com to see what bike we're building and uh, get some entries to win it like literally win it. All right, guys, it is first ride time. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the old camera. My camera. Oh, I guess it is a camera. I'm getting the phone on the quad lock, and uh, we're gonna get this thing going because I'm I'm hyped. Now, guys, I was a little bummed that I didn't get to go to the press launch of this bike, but based on the footage that I saw, it was rainy, and as you guys can see, we have a gorgeous day today. Today's gonna be a good one, boys. All right, so uh, let's get her cranked up since you guys have already heard it. It seems calm. Just wait till we get going. All right, guys, I am 5'10", and I got a 32-inch inseam. I've got slightly bent legs on the MT-10 here. Only slightly. The seat height's around 32 inches, so it's about middle of the, middle of the road. We are going to start in mode D. We'll talk about more of the modes later on. All right, guys, let's get this first ride going. Also, uh, before we get going, if you guys are interested in Discord, uh, we have a motorcycle Discord full of people that are just into motorcycles. So if you're one of those Discord-style people, I invite you to go check it out. We'll have a link for you in the description. All right, MT-10 SP, what you got? <laughs> Even in mode D at power on four, it is still a little quick. Alrighty guys, we're here on the MT-10 SP. I am so excited. Uh, if you guys don't know, 2022, uh, the Yamaha totally redid their MT-10 and uh, I went to the press launch of that bike. It was phenomenal. Now, this is the SP model. I actually haven't done a actual first ride on the original MT-10, the uh, 2022. Kind of skipped straight to the SP. But I think I'll be able to do one of those soon. I saw a couple up at Mountain. Hopefully they hold on to those. Now for this bike, uh, the MT-10 SP, the SP moniker is for Yamaha's special edition bikes. Kind of like on BMW, they put M behind stuff. So SP just means special bike. Now for this motorcycle, it does cost $3,000 more than the base model MT-10. What you get for that is steel braided brake lines, you get semi-active Olin's front and rear suspension, 
and you get the SP livery, which is the black and the silver and the blue. Very specific to the SP lineup. Those are the differences. Now let's get into the first ride. So guys, uh, I like to start my first rides off by talking about body position. Uh, so body position wise, let's start with the seat. The seat is the exact same seat that the MT-10 has. I spent all day riding on it. I got no problems with it. It's a little firm, which is good for this bike because it's more of an aggressive bike that you can throw around. So the seat makes it really easy to move around on the bike. Body position wise, my legs are tucked up a little bit. My back is slightly leaning forward and my arms are kind of like draped down a little bit. My handlebars seem like they're kind of a little tight in. This bike might have the perfect body position that keeps you comfortable but able to be, I don't know, athletic. I want to say athletic for some reason, but I feel ready to do anything I want to do on this bike. And it's because of that body position that I'm kind of ready to go and I can lean forward and get real aggressive on it if I want to, but I don't have to, which is kind of neat. All right, guys, uh, let's talk about electronics real quick because good God, it's going to take a minute. Uh, with the MT-10 SP, we have lots of rider aids. We have all the rider aids. We have a uh, six axis IMU, which gives us ABS, leaning, cornering ABS. We have slide control, wheelie control. We have engine braking control. We have all the controls on this bike that anybody, any rider could uh, want. And uh, they are all changed by the mode up here. As you can see, that will cycle us through the modes. And then we can go to the big mode at the top. You can actually go into the menus, and you can do this on the regular MT-10 as well. You can go into the menus, the YRC menu, and customize the hell out of this motorcycle. As stock, this bike will come D mode being the, the rain-ish mode. <laughs> but Yamaha decided to go the route of every single mode. No mode is named. It's all just letters. Uh, you know, like ABCD, and then you can customize the modes as much as you want, and you can do it on the fly, or you can do it inside of their menu. So, a lot of customizability with this motorcycle. That's either a pro or a con. If you like really customizing it, this bike is great. If you like for the company to kind of do it for you, and that you just want to have a, a sport mode, a road mode, and a rain mode, then you can set that up. You're just not going to have those delineations uh, naming wise. Now, as far as Yamaha goes, uh, generally with their numbering, I don't really like the fact that Yamaha does numbering. I would rather have words and names because it can be confusing if you don't know what it's based on. Now, Yamaha bases all their information on the more the or the higher the number, the more rider intervention that the motorcycle technology is going to give you. That means a one, you are going to have the least intervention. Power modes, uh, if you have the power on four, that means you have the intervention as much as it will be at four. So, with all that being said, I'm going to put the bike into a different rider mode. If I can go into neutral and I can change from mode D, I can't because the bike is moving. All right, here, let's get stopped. All right, stop. All right, now it's highlighted. I'm going to go to mode B. That's power two, traction control three, slide control two, and suspension is in A2. So those are our settings. We're going to continue on the path of road here. While we're stuck at this red light, guys, YRC settings. <laughs> Look at the dot matrix uh, situation there. So you have power, traction control, slide control, quick shifter up and down, lift control, engine brake management, and brake control. ERS is the electronic suspension control. That's what I mean with how much customizability you have with this motorcycle. Obviously, you can go into all types of stuff. I'm just going to hold it and go back. I just wanted to show you guys really fast uh, how much control you have over this bike. And if that's something you're really into, like digging into the specifics of everything, I think you guys are going to like this uh, bike a lot for how they handle the electronics. Come on, I want to hit this turn. I want to enjoy this motorcycle. All right, boys, doing what the bike wants to do, leaning it over. You can't keep the front wheel on an MT-10 down, let me just tell you. Uh, so guys, weight-wise here on the streets, the bike is a little heavy when you lean it side to side, 
but that weight just melts away the moment that you start going on this bike even at low speeds i think they did a great job of weight management so guys generally riding this bike on the streets as long as you have it in one of the controllable riding modes like c and d the bike is so easy to handle i love the controls the only thing i do i'm not a huge fan of and i'm this is the same on my mt10 as well i own a 2019 mt10 the steering lock on the mt10 is very shallow it, the steering handlebar cannot move very much you know before it hits the steering lock i don't love that especially when i'm trying to do like you know msf style uh practice it is very kind of difficult because it'll hit that steering lock really quickly and uh through my time on my mt10 and i feel like the steering lock is relatively the same uh, it's been difficult at times and most of the time it's in really slow speed stuff It's never gonna be when you're out and about riding hard. You don't have to worry about it there It's just that slow stuff that it can uh, sometimes be a little bit of an issue street wise, you know I'm upright. I've got handlebars. I feel like I have a ton of control of this motorcycle I love this bike for city riding. It's got a good weight to it because I I'm not a huge fan of the super light white bikes. I, I like to have some feel and some stability and on the road with all that power management which this bike does need it's phenomenal for riding here now we're gonna do the highway pull up here and i need to get into a mode and i want to show you guys a little trick that this bike has because i don't know when you would use it but it can do it and it's so strange all right i need to get stopped and i need to get in mode a so and i can tell you guys all right so let's get to mode a all right, we're in A mode. This bike has cruise control, but it also has speed limiting control. So it will limit your speed. And I'm gonna set that speed limit up to 85. That will not let me proceed past 85. How cool is that? I need to get it to 85 before I get on the highway. So when I do this 40 to 80 pull, I'm in mode A. I'm going to give this thing every single thing it got, and hopefully it will not proceed past 85 miles an hour. I have never tested this, and I probably shouldn't be doing it here on a video, but that's kind of crazy. So, guys, this is a 2023 Yamaha MT-10 SP 40 to 80 pull with 85 set on the speed limiter on your mark. <laughs> Get set. Oh, Jesus. Let's go. happened what was that the wheel just lifted up and then i was just like please don't die please don't die please don't die <laughs> oh, that was my favorite that was 100 percent my favorite god almighty damn yamaha has got the wheelie control figured the freak out oh my goodness i just pinned it and hoped for the best and the electronics did literally everything else. And it, it did not let me go past 85 too much, right? That was awesome. All right, guys, we're on the highway. We got to talk about regular stuff. So uh, first thing on the highway, let's talk about wind. The wind is actually not bad. Do I feel the wind? Absolutely. I feel it universally over my body, but this is why I love this body position. I'm slightly leaned forward. It sets me up. I can just lean into the wind and it just holds me up. Do I want a bigger windscreen? If I was going to do maybe over 200 miles in a day, I might get a bigger windscreen. I've got the big touring screen on my MT-10. I absolutely love it. I'd be totally okay with this though. Now, I'm not even going to talk about power on the highway. You guys know this bike has got 164 horsepower and like 89 foot-pounds of torque more power than you'll ever need if you want cruise control the bike has that it's the same button to do cruise control as it is speed limit lock yamaha's cruise control works fantastic it's very small it does the, a great job i absolutely love this new cruise control setup uh, as far as vibration on the highway i've got the smallest bit in my uh in my foot pegs and my handlebars nothing that i would even blink at no problem with that at all and then to get to that speed limit control, you just press that again. You gotta set it, 
and then you can go up from there if you hold it it'll go up in intervals of five i'm not really getting blown around i feel super stable you know the mt10 is a really flicky bike and i think a lot of people would be surprised at how good it does on the highway i was certainly surprised another one of the cool things about this new model mt10 this bike is actually i think 30 percent more fuel efficient or something like that something about air intakes and stuff like that whatever they did it's awesome oh that's oh that speed control i like it and i don't like it at the same time that's hilarious i've got it set to 85 so i'm only kind of stupid here on the highway here let's take it off just so we have it off <laughs> Oh yeah, I think you guys would be really surprised with the MT-10. On the highway, I think it, uh, it performs far better than it really should, honestly, for being a hyper-naked. Let's get it leaned over and see what the Olins feel like, though. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. You get such precision on this bike, which, again, you wouldn't really expect out of a hyper-naked, but... That semi-active Olin's, not only is it electronic and you can change it on the fly and you can dial it into whatever you want, but my God, it feels so good. Leaning this bike over, it just falls in so easily. So guys, before I keep going, let's jump over to the Cardo spot and see what the guys in the camera car think of the bike. Thanks to our buddies over at Cardo. Part about this MT-10 SP has got to be those Olin suspension. God, I love it when a company uses such great parts like that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of them old sound holes. Make a broom broom go loud. Who to talk it? A sound company making sound holes. Thank you guys in the camera car for your opinions. Even more so, thank you Cardo for sponsoring the first ride series. If you guys want to get 10% off of a Cardo, we got a link for you down in the description below. Save yourself some money on the best Bluetooth unit you can get for motorcyclists. So uh, let's talk about power delivery real quick. This bike was uh, designed, this engine was designed to give you peak power I think it's between 5,000 and 8,000 RPM. During that time, the bike's little uh, tack turns green, and that is the time the engine is in prime placement for power, and Lord God, you can feel it so strong. It is an extremely strong powered motorcycle, but it's really nice to have that uh, electronic rider aids to help you manage it if you're not wanting all of that power. Braking wise is another thing that the MT-10 has been massively upgraded uh, and the MT-10 SP has even more upgrades on top of that. So the MT-10, the base model, has a radially, radially, I have such a hard time saying this, radially mounted master cylinder, which gives you more feel and the SP has steel braided brake lines, which give you a really precise feel on the brake lever. The brakes for me personally, for the new MT-10, were one of the things that I noticed the most, which is a big deal, right? Because I own an MT-10 and I actually rode my MT-10 like four hours in the rain up to the press launch for the new MT-10. So the second I got on that this new MT-10, I was like, man, those brakes are so much better. I love that. I already told you guys, the suspension on the base model was great from my riding. I haven't ridden it on this route, but this Olin's just steps it up to a whole nother level. I don't know if the majority of people really need the Olin's, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of technical riding, maybe some track days, maybe you live near a lot of curvy roads and you like going to those curvy roads, you're the type of person where the, the 3,000 extra bucks for the SP model might start to come into, like start making sense for you to get that really precise feel. I don't know if the bike's gonna perform that much better but you're definitely gonna, as a rider, have a lot more technical feel when you're riding it. I didn't even get to talk about the quick shifter up and down, but the quick shifter is so good on this bike. It is absolutely incredible. One of the big upgrades with the quick shifter was that Yamaha changed the clutch material and it allows for the quick shifter to softly grab the next gear and uh let me just tell you it makes this bike feel so dialed my uh my 19 mt10 it, it's a little strong it has a quick shifter up not the quick shifter down like this one has but this new quick shifter mixed with that clutch material change everything is just seamless and it just pops into that gear so well i'm a huge fan of that 
That was one of those things I didn't expect that to be such a big deal. But if you go from a 19 to a 22 MT-10, uh, riding it the exact same way, you will absolutely notice a difference. Um, I was kind of surprised, actually. If you guys are wondering what these little vents are, of course, a music company would make sound amplifiers to make a motorcycle sound better which is why this bike sounds as good as it does with the stock exhaust. I love the CP4. The crossplane has a very distinct sound that I'm a huge fan of. And having sound amplifiers on a bike that already sounds good is like, uh, I don't even know. It's like giving you more of something that's already really good. It's like you order five wings and they give you 10. That's what this bike is. This is an order of five wings that came out as 10. I don't know how else to describe it, but I am super excited about it. All right, guys, let's talk about the cluster up here on the MT-10 SP. Now, uh, you guys know Yamaha's uh, materials. They are using solid stuff. It doesn't have that, like, super expensive feel like a Ducati or a Triumph has, but it has 100% functionality, and I treat my MT-10 like crap. I use it all the time and the buttons are solid. They work always. The only issue I have with the controls on this bike is that stupid menu scroll wheel. Yamaha, I want you to listen to me. I love the shit out of you. I love the shit out of your motorcycles. Asterisk, I hate that thing. Other than that, I'm super happy with this bike. I love the blacked out uh, mount for the uh, brakes. I love the blacked out levers. I love the adjustability of the levers. The levers have such a good feel. And uh, the screen, I showed you guys a little bit of that. I love this screen. Uh, it works really well. You get the quick shifter green lights if it's able to go up or down. I think that's uh, a neat little feature. Now the gas gauge on the right is super helpful. We love that. The only thing that's kind of problematic is the first click you're going to a C of that gas gauge is what it just did. Oh my God, that's hilarious. So now it's at half a tank. So between when I started that sentence and when I ended that sentence, I, I perceptually, I lost half a tank of gas. I cannot believe that that happened right then. That's that I, I did not plan for that, but that's, that's perfectly my problem. Had I started a trip two seconds ago, I would have been like, oh, I got a full tank. Cool, I'm good. And then I go 10 feet down the road, and now I got half a tank. So as you can see, under half a tank, it gets a little more precise. I wish I had a little of that precision in the top. So maybe instead of from full tank to half, maybe I could go from full tank to three-fourths or something like that. I would really love to have that. Other than that, uh, there's a lot of info on the screen, but... I've been riding this bike ever since I got it on loan and I have been able, I now know exactly where to look for the information I want. I'm totally happy with how Yamaha put that information on. I got no problems with it. Uh, you know, especially if you're going to own a motorcycle, you'll learn that screen in like two seconds. So uh, we're going to jump off the road real quick and uh, do a little walk around of the old MT-10 SP. And uh, in this parking lot, I can actually show you guys the steering stem lock, because uh, we'll do the lock test. MT-10 ain't going to do great on it. <laughs> let me just let me just prep you up for it. Quick shifter even goes from second to neutral going slow. Props. Mine always falls into neutral when I'm in situations like this, so uh, that's pretty impressive. I love seeing that. And boom. Just like that. Alrighty guys, 2023 Yamaha MT-10 SP walk around. Well, now that we're doing the walk around, I can show you guys specifically that um, SP livery that this bike has. You're looking at blue wheels, you're looking at black fairings, you're looking at um, aluminum kind of colored silver with blue accents. Uh, you can see that swing arm specifically has this like brushed aluminum look. I love it. It has a very unique look. Yamaha has done a good job of when you see an SP, you know the S it's an SP. Uh, when you see the R1M, it has the very similar uh, look 
to this along with the MT-09 SP. There is an SP model to the MT-09. Uh, one of the things you guys might notice, look how thin this bike is. Like, it looks tiny. It's a thick old boy up front. But overall, it does have a shorter wheelbase, and that helps it so much. On top of having the Olins, it having that shorter wheelbase just allows it to fall side to side. And that's one of the things I have personally fallen in love with with the MT-10 being an owner, is you get a gobs of power, but with a short wheelbase, you just throw that thing left and right. It is phenomenal. Now, the uh, head of the bike is kind of hit or miss for some people. I will tell you, it grows on you. I like this area. I'm not a huge fan of the uh, R1-ish lights. Those are the same lights my MT-10 has. But the headlight does grow on you. Actually, the touring windscreen that I've seen, it integrates into this head so well. I am super jealous because my touring windscreen makes my bike look like a Triceratops. This one integrates really good. The tail, it's kind of whatever. I like how thin and like compact it is, but I don't really love the shape of the rear light. Obviously, if I owned this, I would get rid of that ASAP. One of the things that the uh, SP swing arm does is it kind of makes the exhaust blend in and you don't notice it as much. I'd probably get a new exhaust on this bike just for the way it looks. I love the acro exhaust, the way those look. Uh, up here, you guys can see these steel braided brake lines. That's what's giving such a good feel. Uh, when you're pulling the brake lever. Love those. I think you'll be surprised. Between the radially mounted master and the steel braided lines, I think you guys would be shocked if you guys rode one of these compared to the old model. And obviously, you, <laughs> it's hard to miss the old in suspension, right? Just big and gold. You got the same in the back. All electronic. Uh, it's good times. You guys can see the little connectors here at the top. Never has an MT-10 been so close to an R1 race bike. That's what we're seeing right here, guys. I love this bike. I love the CP4. I love the way it looks. Um, it doesn't have that side fairing that my MT-10 has. I don't really know if I care or not yet. I'm, I'm kind of still, verdict is still out. Jury's still out on that. Uh, but overall, I am totally here for this bike, 100%. Uh, so guys, I'm going to grab my phone off my quad lock. There's actually a quad lock uh, link in the description. You guys can get a discount on that. The description of these first ride videos, guys, are just full. <laughs> They're freaking full of uh, discounts for you guys. So make sure to check them out if you're looking for a Bluetooth quad lock. Winning a motorcycle. I don't know. So uh, I'm going to film some vertical content on my phone. If you guys are uh, on Instagram or TikTok, we are on both. So if you're on Instagram, follow us at C2DOPix. And if you're on TikTok, follow us at Chase on Two Wheels. We post a ton of vertical content. We've been posting a ton last year, and we're going to do even more this year. So don't miss out on all the other content we're making. I'm going to make that real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, that's it for vertical content. If you guys go over to those platforms, you will find all of it there. All right, let's do a Stingston lock test, and let's find out what I buy or what I skip on the MT-10 SP. All right, steering sim lock test. Actually, let's get out of A mode. We don't need to be in that craziness. All right, that's it. That's steering sim lock. <laughs> Are we going to the other side of the road, fam? Uh, about halfway in the road. I'd say a solid 50%. <laughs> Not going to win any awards with it, but you know, a bike cannot be perfect. And the steering stem on the MT-10 is definitely not great. All right, guys, y'all have heard about what I think about the MT-10 SP. Now, uh, before I get to if I'm going to buy it or skip it, not personally, but like if I would buy it or skip it, I got to say, of all the Yamaha bikes that I've ridden, I think the MT-10 SP, the 2023 model, is probably the most precise and dialed motorcycle that I've ridden from them. Everything feels like it should. Everything reacts like I want it to. I don't know if that's just the MT-10 owner in me and just like game recognizing game, you know what I'm saying? Or if this is just a, like dialed is the best word I really know. Like everything performs and does exactly like I want. It's just been a freaking awesome riding experience. If you guys have noticed, I have had a lot to say of this bike. Luckily, Yamaha is letting us loan this bike for the next couple months. So I've got plenty of time to really dig into it 
and learn this bike. So if you guys want any specific videos, just drop them in the comments. I'm definitely going to compare this bike to my 2019 model. I cannot wait to do that in a future video. The big question is the MT-10 and the MT-10SB are both phenomenal motorcycles. The MT-10 coming in a literal around uh, 14 grand, this one coming in at 17 grand. Would I pay an extra $3,000 for the modifications that this bike has i feel like it's it's close but it's dependent on you the rider if you are a fan of really technical riding you are you could you might consider doing a track day on your mt10 in the future or if you ride a lot of technical roads a lot of the time i think the three grand would be worth it between the the steel braided brake lines and the Olin suspension, I think you're really going to get your money's worth in technical riding. If you are just doing the regular style riding and every now and then you go to the mountains, which is kind of what I do, you'd be totally fine saving the three grand and uh, just getting a regular MT-10. Uh, they make some great color options in that bike and I that bike performs absolutely phenomenally. It also has all the electronics already, so you don't got to worry about it. So. Uh, would I buy the SP? No, I would buy uh, the regular model. Uh, that being said, hopefully I'll be able to ride the regular model on a first ride around my route and really get a better idea about it. But as of right now, I think I'd rather go with a regular model and just save three grand. The only thing I would be sad about is the, the color scheme. I would be sad that I don't get the uh, brushed aluminum swing arm. Other than that, I can live without those steel braided lines and I can live without the Olins. Shout out to Yamaha for once again loaning us motorcycles. We love them for it. But guys, that's about all I got to say about this bike. Here's a video of the press launch of the MT-10. If you guys want to see me actually go out to the press launch. If you made it this far in the video, you're in the outro crew. Thank you so much for getting there. You guys ride safe. Make sure to like the video and let me know in the comments if you would go with the SP model or the regular model. And I'll see you on the next one. Later. Later.